Hey guys, Arkin Templar here with another episode of Better Know a Heresy. Caesar Papism, or Caesaro Papism. Jeez, what the heck is that? And why do I have a picture of Napoleon? Well, I have a picture of Napoleon because um, he is kind of the a more modern version of Caesar, and there's certainly efforts to kind of deify himself in this uh, picture. Broadly speaking, what Caesar Papism is, is the idea of merging religious and secular offices into one. But as opposed to a theocracy, it's where the secular trumps the religious. And in effect, the um, generally speaking, it's an emperor uh, becomes the head of the church as well as being the head of state, but his position as head of state comes first. And basically, it results in the opposite of theocracy, in which... Um, religious doctrine is solely based on political expediency, is kind of how I would describe it. Uh, this is in particular a very common era, error in the, um, the modern era, is what I was trying to say, uh, where a lot of people seem to think that, um, government should have authority over religious institutions and should be able to force them to do things. Uh, the issue of gay marriage is probably the most notable example. Or there's ongoing debate about whether or not the government will eventually just force religious institutions to provide them uh, or um, throw them into jail. So yeah, so basically it's just um, the king is deified, but the, um, the secular role comes first. Um, as opposed to, yeah, like I said, theocracies, because there were theocracies throughout the Middle Ages, uh, generally speaking, though, the religious side kind of came first, because they were not called, um, like, a duke or something. They were called prince archbishop, or just archbishop, or, or something to that effect. And their clerical title was the one of prominence. Um, it's kind of interesting, though, because um, even though there were a number of theocracies, uh, broadly speaking, they never really were Caesar Papist in their orientation, as generally speaking, the um, there was a certain separation of duties. Um, the archbishops ruled their lands in a um, kind of a secular ruler fashion, and the uh, they also were uh, clergy in a religious fashion. And there was certainly a little bit of intermingling between the two rules, uh, but broadly speaking, they functioned uh, more or less the same as other. Uh, feudal states, uh, with the exception of succession, of course, being uh, determined in a completely different manner, using the election of archbishops and bishops and appointment from Rome, as opposed to their being uh, inheritance, because uh, priests are theoretically at least celibate. So, this was very common, particularly in Eastern Europe, uh, where Peter the Great um, took most of the Orthodox Church's property, largely ended their independence. I think he repressed the patriarchy and um, just wholly subjugated the Orthodox Church to his will. Uh, this was also fairly common during the Byzantine Empire, in which the emperor, I believe, had the authority to appoint the Patriarch of Constantinople. Um, and it's just, it's, it's fairly common in Orthodox Christianity just because in Orthodox Christianity, uh, they do hold the principle that the king is theoretically the head of, uh, the church. Uh, granted that's more supposed to be a protector of the church role than kind of the secular overlord of the church, but it's not, it's not as hard, uh, because each church is national instead of international, for the king to merely usurp the role of the church and merge it into his own innate role. So that is a short definition of Caesar Papism. Uh, this one's going to be a bit shorter than some of the others, since it's kind of a broad concept and it's not really as specific as some of the others. This is Argent Templar signing out.